Welcome to this video about entities in Cloud Compare. In this video, we will explore and explain some of the fundamental entities in Cloud Compare that are essential for processing and analyzing point clouds and mesh. We will cover topics such as 3D point clouds, Octree, Polyline, Mesh, Primitives, Viewpoint, and Raster. By the end of this video, you will have a good understanding of these entities and how they can be used in Cloud Compare. So, let's get started. First of all, I need to prepare my data so that we can dive into the entities in Cloud Compare. I loaded my point cloud data into the software, which contains a large amount of points in 3D space. To focus on a specific area of interest, I use the sizer segmentation tool to isolate a building from the surrounding environment. This allows us to analyze the building's features in detail and extract valuable information from it. The first entity we will be discussing is the 3D Point Cloud. A point cloud is a collection of unorganized 3D points with each point having its own X, I, and Z coordinates. In addition to this positional data, a point cloud can also be associated with different types of attributes. For example, we can assign a unique color to the entire entity or give each point a specific color. We can also add normal vectors to each point to define the surface orientation. And we can associate scalar values with each point to represent physical properties such as reflectivity, temperature, or intensity. The Picking Point Information Tool is a useful feature that allows users to visualize the coordinate system and scalar field of their data. With this tool, you can easily select and highlight specific points of interest within your point cloud. Additionally, the ability to draw polygons and measure distances can be incredibly useful for you. By saving area labels, you can also add annotations to your point cloud for later reference. However, 
Before we delve into the topic of polygons, it's important to first understand the concept of an octree. This data structure plays a crucial role in many of the processing algorithms used in cloud compare, such as distance computation and spatial operators. Understanding how the octree works can help users better understand and manipulate their data. An octree is a tree-based data structure that is used to partition a thread space into smaller regions. The name octree comes from the fact that each node in the tree has up to eight children, corresponding to the eight octants of a thread space. Octrees are particularly useful for processing point clouds because they allow for fast spatial queries, such as finding all points within a certain region of space or finding the nearest neighbor to a given point. This is because the octree allows for efficient pruning of branches of the tree that don't contain relevant points, thus reducing the search space. In Cloud Compare specifically, the octree structure is used extensively by most of the processing algorithms, such as distance computation and spatial operators. It also allows for the visualization of the point cloud data in a hierarchical manner, making it easier to explore and analyze large data sets. The third entity in Cloud Compare is the polyline. A polyline is a useful geometric entity that consists of a series of connected line segments. The polyline can either be open or closed, forming a loop. By default, a polyline is a 3D object. However, they can also be 2D entities and are displayed as a 2D overlay object with their coordinates in pixels. In Cloud Compare, a polyline is stored as a set of indices relative to an associated point cloud line. The vertices of the polyline are stored as a point cloud, which is typically a child of the mesh object in the database tree. However, polylines do not inherit the features of their associated clouds such as color, normals, and others. Even though polylines don't inherit these features, they can be associated with a single color, red, green, blue. 
This makes it easier to differentiate between multiple polynomials in a complex model. Now, let's talk more about the fourth entity, the mesh. A mesh is a fundamental entity in 3D modeling and computer graphics. It's essentially a collection of triangles that form the surface of an object. Each triangle in a mesh is represented by a triplet of integer indices that correspond to the vertices in the associated point cloud. One of the great things about meshes is that they can inherit all the features of their associated point cloud, such as color, normals, and scalar fields. But that's not all. Meshes can also be associated with other attributes like per triangle, normal vectors, materials, texture coordinates, and even textures. In practice, a standard mesh usually corresponds to a single object, and its vertices are stored as a point cloud, which is typically a child of the mesh object in the database tree. Overall, meshes are an important tool for creating 3D models and graphics, and their ability to inherit features from point clouds makes them a versatile and powerful entity in the world of 3D data processing. The sixth entities are primitives. They are a useful tool in 3D modeling and are often used as building blocks for more complex shapes. As previously mentioned, they can be created with the primitive factory or with the tools and fit methods. By selecting the appropriate tab, you can choose from a variety of primitive types such as plane, box, sphere, cylinder, cone, torus, and dish. Once you have selected the desired primitive, you can adjust its parameters such as dimensions to create the exact shape you need. The creation process is completed by clicking on the Creates button, and you can repeat the process with different types of primitives as needed. It's important to note that you can change the primitive type at any time. In addition to adjusting the primitive's dimensions, you can also set the initial precision or the amount of triangles in the tessellated version of the primitive. This can be useful if you need a higher level of detail in your model. It's also worth mentioning that primitives are defined along the main axis X, E, I, and Z by default. However, you can apply a rigid transformation to it afterwards using the apply transformation method to change its orientation or position as needed. The seventh entity in 3 modeling is the viewpoint, which refers to the current 3D view viewport. One can save the current viewport parameters, including the camera position and orientation perspective state of the active 3D view as a viewport entity using the display, then save you viewport as object method. 
This entity is then automatically added to the root of the database tree. If you want to restore the viewport, simply click on the Apply button in the Viewport Entity Properties, and the viewport will be restored to its previous state. It's worth noting that viewport entities can be saved in bin files along with the other entities. The corresponding viewport can be restored later using this entity, which can only be saved in bin files. When it comes to visualizing a 3D scene, sometimes a 2D overlay can be helpful. That's where images come into play. Images can be loaded into the software from standard image file formats like JPG BMP, PNG, and more. All you have to do is use the file then open mechanism to load them in. Once the image is loaded, it can be displayed in the 3D view as a 2D overlay. The rasterize tool is a powerful feature in cloud compare that allows users to convert 3D point clouds into 2D images. This tool can be used to create visualizations of point clouds that are easier to share and communicate with others. The Rasterize tool creates images from the point clouds by projecting the 3D points onto a 2D plane. The Rasterize tool allows you to specify a variety of parameters to control how the image is generated. For example, you can adjust the resolution of the image, specify a color for the image, and even select a background color. You can also choose to include any labels or annotations that you have added to the point cloud in the image. Finally, you can save all these entities in a binary project which is a file format that allows you to store multiple entities in a single file. This feature allows you to work on a project over time, saving and loading entities as needed. That's all for this talk. Thank you for listening and exploring the different entities in Cloud Compare. 